Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Coach Rosa here. In uh, this video, what we're going to go ahead and do is that we're going to cover uh, composite figures. Um, so some of you may have already uh, have an idea of what a composite figure is based on the definition of it. So when you think about composite figures, um, it's, you initially think about two figures that combine together. Now, initially, like we have a go, like in this case here, we have a square and then we have a right triangle. Now, I'm not the best artist here. I'm just saying that they can go ahead and combine together and share a side. Now, sometimes you'll be asked to go and look for the area and perimeter of this. So uh, initially, if whatever information that you know, remember from our, um, our notes or our, the, um, let's see if I can go and find them. Anything that we have from our um, formulas like areas equal base times height or base times height divided by two or any other formula that we may have, have encountered in 11-1, uh, then um, just make sure you go ahead and refresh yourself on that. So some of you may have forgotten. So going back to this one right here, let's see if I can find the formula chart. Mm -hmm. Well, so some of you may have uh, uh, forgotten about it, but like uh, we're, this video is to go ahead and remind you, oh, this one right here. So this formula chart right here is what we need to go ahead and work with. So if you have something like this, that we have going is one of those things that you need to go ahead and get yourself acclimated with what you're seeing. Okay, so I might need to go ahead and take this a little bit over here. Uh, yeah. What's going? Good Friday. Okay. All right. So this is what we're looking at. So base times height. So remember, B uh, is equal to your base. H is your height, and so forth. Now, um, the D stands for diagonal, okay? So just be aware that these are the, the formulas that we're gonna be looking at. Now, uh, as we're going with it, for your composite figures, sometimes you have different figures where they may combine together like this one here, and, or maybe like stack on top just like this one. And sometimes you'll have the figures that kind of overlap and you have to look for the shadows. So I'm gonna go over a few basic ones. And for the shadow ones, I'll give you an idea on how to start them. Okay, so when we're dealing with 11-3 composite figures, what we wanna go ahead and do is that we want to go ahead and cut the figure like it's cake. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this figure just like this. So initially, if we're looking for the perimeter, I have 20, I have nine, I have 14, I have 17, but I don't know what this part is. So I'm gonna use my understanding of a triangle to go ahead and look for that particular part. Now, uh, that being said, um, you're, there's also parts that you need to understand about this composite figure. So how is it drawn? How long is this little red line right here? How long is, how, what's the height of this red triangle? So you can use everything that you know across from here. So if I know 17's on the left side and nine's over here, this right here cuts all the way across. And so initially this remaining part is gonna be 17 minus nine. So if you're just trying to go ahead and get this, get this part, I know this part right here is already nine. And if I slide it over, it's right here. So I'm trying to figure out that what's this yellow part. So I'm gonna take 17 minus nine, and it's gonna go ahead and give me eight. So this is eight for my height. So that's eight uh, for my height of triangle. And then let's do the same way that we just did down here. So if I'm looking for, make it shade in red. So if I'm looking for this one, so if I know this is yellow, I can move it down all the way down right here. And then if I know this part over here is already 20, then I'm gonna go ahead and determine that I need to go ahead and get rid of that yellow part. And then what's left over is gonna be six right here. So initially this just falls down and then what's left behind of this floor is gonna go ahead and be six. Well, it looks kind of looks like a house to me. And then you're gonna go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem. So I have this triangle, eight, six. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for this missing side. 
which is x. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. So we have 8 squared plus 6 squared is equal to x squared. That gives you 64. This is 36. And this gives you 100. Remember, you have to show full work on what you're doing. OK, so square root it, and you get 10. So x equals to 10. So this part right here, instead of x, will be 10. Now, initially, oh, we'll change the color on that one. Initially, what you're given is what you're going to use to go ahead and find for the, um, for the perimeter. So I know this part is 20. I know this is 9 already. I know that this is 14. I know that this is 17. So what's the part that I just found out? I just found out this part is going to be 10. So I can find my perimeter automatically with what I'm given. So I have 17 plus 20 plus 9 plus 14 plus 10. And that's going to be equal to a value. Let me just go ahead and calculate that so I know what we're working with. So 17 plus 20 plus 9 plus 14 plus 10. And that gives you 70, 70 yards to go ahead and work with. Okay. So this is 70 yards for your perimeter. Okay. For everything that's around here. Like if you're walking around this line. Okay. Now if we're looking for uh, area. So area, what are the two figures that you see here? You see a, rec a, uh, uh, a rectangle and then you see a, a triangle. So for the first figure, so I'm called first figure, and then now I'm getting rid of this yellow green part, I mean the red part, and I got my second figure. So first figure. So I'm gonna take area is equal to base times height, and you're gonna take 20 times nine, because my nine is right here. My 20 is down here, so it's gonna be 180 is equal to A. So A is equal to, oh, 180 yards, okay? Squared so far. Now figure two, so we're done with that one already. We found out what the green part was already. So for, for figure one. Now for figure two, what we have going on is that we have a triangle. So figure one was this, mother figures this, so area is equal to base times height divided by two. So my base is six. My height is eight divided by two. Now, this being said, you don't use eight and six for your perimeter, okay? Because it's not part, it's not, it's, it's already in there somewhere, but we're taking whatever is in black numbers as our uh, walls for this case. So imagine if it's a blueprint, we're taking these walls right here as our, uh, lengths for the sides. So area is equal to 48 divided by 2, which is 24 yards squared. Okay, so now I found out everything inside of here. So now I'm looking for the total area of the composite figure. So I'm going to go ahead and combine these two. So combine, and then you'll get area is equal to 200 and four yards squared okay so there you go so this is area which equals 204 yards squared okay so that's going to be your first composite figure that you have to work with now that being said sometimes you make it a few loony ones where you have to go ahead and figure it out like um if you're trying to go ahead and figure out um maybe this one here what I would do is like, I would just go ahead and cut it. And then you have a rectangle and then you have a trapezoid right here. It's, it's kind of slanted to the side. So if I know this is five right here, then what I would do is that I would go ahead and just get rid of five from there. So this would become 10. Because 10 plus five gives you 15. And then over here, if you know that this is six, that's six, which means this part right here has to go ahead and be four. So you kind of have, so 
So you have your two figures is a rectangle, and this figure would go up being trapezoid. So I'm gonna turn it. So it kind of looks like like that. So you have something where this is four, this is seven, this is ten, and then now you have your your base one, base two. So that's your B one, that's your B two, and this is your height. Okay, and they can use your formula. Sometimes you may have some easy ones like this one where they just cut them across and then you have two shapes to work with. So there's always one shape and there's always another shape. Uh, now, uh, if you have something like this, what you're gonna go ahead and do is that you're gonna take whatever you have. So I know this is 14, so I'm gonna label this as 14 right here. Now, the other part that you have to be aware of is that if you go ahead and examine, if you go ahead and examine what two shapes you have in here, you have this shape, and then you have this shape. So from here, you can find the perimeter and of this. Uh, you can find the figure on one and then two. But here's the thing. We have to understand what area for this square is. So area is equal to uh, S squared. So that means it's 14 squared which will be 196. Now the area of this figure right here, so looks like it could go ahead and be a half circle. So I had to go ahead and figure this part out. Now, if I know this part is over here is already 14 in the lean, going up and down, this part right here is also 14. But if I'm looking for area of a circle, I have to understand what the radius is. So if this radius of this circle, well, it has to go ahead and finish here. And I know the whole entire uh, diameter is 14. That means my radius has to go ahead and be equal to seven. So I have seven here. Now, that being said, just plug in what you know. So pi seven squared, and then you get uh, 49 pi. From here, then you're gonna go ahead and just uh, take it as is, as what you got. So kilometers squared in this case. Oh, this one happens to go ahead and be kilometers squared. Now from here, if we're trying to go ahead and look for the area, which is probably the first one, well, actually it was the first thing we did. So I looked area first, okay? So I would go ahead and just combine these two. So as we're going, you want to go ahead and plug it into your calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and have 49 pi. Let's see. It asks for nearest hundredth. So we're going to go in 49 pi. And that gives you 153.94 plus 196. And that's gonna go ahead and be 349.94. And that's gonna be your area. So 349.94. So my perimeter, okay, so I'm good. So this is my area then, this is my total area for this one. Now, if I'm looking for the circumference, like the perimeter, oh, if I'm looking for the perimeter of this now, then you have to go ahead and look at it from this point of view. I know this is 14. I know this is 14. I do not include this because that is not part of my outside. So you get rid of it. So your perimeter, you have 14, and you have 14, and you have 14, and then now you have to look for this part right here. So that's a circumference. So circumference equal to two pi r. And that helps you find what the whole length around the circle. It's kind of like a little track. So we have to go ahead and identify what that is. Now, if I know my circle was this right here. So if I know this was my circle, then I need to go ahead and identify um, what half of it going around is. So my radius is already seven. So I know that's two pi seven. 
and that's going to be equal to 14 pi. Now the issue here is this represents everything that's going around in my circle. I'm not perfect, guys. It's, so I'm going to go ahead and redraw this again. My circle. And you take half of it because I'm just cutting it in half, and I just need to understand what this part over here is. So I'm looking at this side right there. I need to find out how many dots it, take, it took for me to go ahead and uh, draw that whole entire length. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this by two. So now I'm going to go ahead and have seven pi left over. Now from here, I already know that my perimeter, so this over here is seven pi. So I have to go ahead and find out that's 14. This is 14. That's 14. And this is seven pi. So I'm going to go ahead and add up everything that's going to go ahead and be highlighted. So this is my first figure. My second figure, it's pretty much 14 times three. So that's 28, should be 42. And so from here, if I go and take seven pi, that's gonna go and be 21.99. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just combine what I know. So you're gonna go ahead and take that, add, Twenty-one point nine nine, and you get forty-three point nine eight, and so that's going to be your perimeter for this one. So forty-three point nine eight in here. Okay. So just throwing it out there for you. So be aware that these are some of the steps that you might come into. Now, if sometimes you run to some of these, but these are the little bit more complicated ones. So just understand that. Imagine if I had, uh, if this took that same example, but now I did this and I'm trying to look for what's inside here. And this happens to be 14. So this is your shaded example. So call this three. Oh wait, so this is your new shaded example. So let's say I'm trying to figure out this one. You find out for the area, so find the area of the shaded, shaded part. So you would do the same steps that we just did over here, but instead of combining it like you did over there, what I would do is that I will subtract it. So subtract, the areas. So of area one and then area two. So if I know I have 42 and then I have 21.99, you want to go ahead and subtract. And so if I go ahead and do that, so I get 42 minus 21.99 then my area is going to go ahead and be 20.01, uh, which was it? It was kilometers. Kilometers squared. Okay. So there you go. So don't forget about your units too. It's really important to always understand what you're looking at. Uh, so this initially is a majority of everything that is covered for a shaded figures and uh, also the composite figures that you have going with. So just be aware of it. Um, so this is Coach Raza, so just tune in for the next video uh, and then go from there.